What up bitches, welcome back to a third or second channel video, depending on what the intro says. Hiya. But seriously though, if you guys are wondering where husband, kaiju, married toga's gone, that's all been privated. YouTube has copyright the shit out of that, and I can't monetize my channel without those copyrights being cleaned off first, so I'm trying to fix that first before that happens. So without further ado, hope you guys enjoy the movie to What If Deku Married Lala. Enjoy. I'm a booty eating bandit, yeah. Again, with an actual second year Izuku in his high school journey. Around this time, all events from season 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7, all through to 8, would have already been completed in the actual series. So this series is actually going to be a lot more different than what you guys turn it on to be. So let's go further in without me rambling. As Izuku was walking down his street ready to appear back home, Izuku would have actually been meeting up with his friends from school quite often, this being Ochaku Oraka, Ida, and a bunch of others as well. Izuku was walking back home one day as he heard little rumbles in the sky. Izuku thought, maybe it's just a quirk usage, he thought. But Izuku could be wrong, as Izuku carried on that day hanging around with his close friends. As the day came to a close, once Izuku finished in the arcade. Alright, see you later, Ida. Ochako, see ya, Izuku said. As before, Izuku could leave, Ochako met up with him and asked him a question that Izuku will remember for ages and beyond that. Izu, Deku kun, would you. She stood on her words as nothing came out. Before Ochaka could finish her sentence, Izuku rudely interrupted her accidentally, of course. Sorry, Ochaka, but I really need to go. My mom is going to be back very, very soon and she wants me to make dinner for her. So sorry, Ochaka, you can tell me this tomorrow, Izuku said as Izuku ran off, trying to get home as soon as possible. As the moment Izuku left, Ochako just had a tear fall down her eye. Was he just rejected me? She said. But she thought about this for quite a long time after Izuku left. No, he can't reject me. He didn't give me a straight answer, did he? So no, he didn't reject me, Ochako said with a big smile on her face starting to cheer herself up. As we come back to our perspective of Midoriya, as Izuku arrived back home and made some dinner for his mother and his little baby sister. As, well, Izuku sees her as a baby, but we all know in real terms, she's a full-grown adult. There's the age of 11, I would think, in the anime, I think? Don't quote me on it. As Izuku arrived back home and made dinner for his sister and mother. As the moment Izuku finished it, he refrigerated it and just went to go have a long, relaxing bath. As the moment Izuku was halfway through his bath, he could hear a loud boom on the atmosphere. Izuku looked out of his window as he opened up the actual air ventable systems. Izuku looked out to see something heading straight for him, as Izuku would have tried to get out of the way, but thanks to the actual velocity of this little thing, it crashed straight into Izuku, hitting him on the head, as Izuku fell straight back into the water. As Izuku was catching his breath, <gasps> holy shit, as Izuku woke back up, trying to get back up onto his feet. As Izuku coughed up little bits of water, but still, he still felt something squishy on his fingers. As Izuku squeezed once, as Izuku opened his eyes to see a beautiful pink-haired girl sitting right in front of him. As Izuku was like, what the hell? Izuku said as he shouted this. As the pink girl would have just said to him, Huh, so this is Earth. It seems a bit tiny than what I thought it would be, she said. As Izuku was just about to get out of the bath, realizing he was butt naked. As the moment Izuku heard a front door open. Izuku, honey, I'm home. Inko said, shouting down the corridor. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, this is bad, Izuku said. I need to hide you quick, Izuku said, as Izuku grabbed her by the arm, pushing her far into the toilet or bathroom, as he threw her right into the bathtub again. As Izuku just stood on the outer layers of it, saying, 
I'll be out in just a second, Mom. I'll be out in just a second, Shizuku said. As uh, Shizuku found different ways to try his best to try and hide this from his mother. As we do his little skips for a couple of minutes, as uh, Shizuku was just opening the back window, as Shizuku heard Inko opening as well. Go, go quickly, Shizuku said. As uh, Shizuku opened a window, but the moment he did, however, he heard a loud boom at his front garden port. There they are, the man said, as Izuku said, like, what the fuck is that, Izuku said, as the two men instantly jumped up at the front gate of the actual window for the bathroom, saying, Princess Lala, I appreciate if you come back immediately, your arranged marriage is very, very soon, miss, as the, before he could finish that sentence, Izuku used one for all and punched him right in the face, knocking him far and back as Izuku grabbed Lala's hand and carried her bridal style. Izuku managed to put on his trousers that he had from this morning. Come on, Miss Lala, was it? Izuku said. As Izuku picked her up and used 20% and launched himself far out of the window, trying to get as far away as possible. As Izuku arrived five miles away from his original house, as Izuku sat down with Lala for just a second. So, who are you, Izuku said. Well, my name's Lala and I come from outer space, she said smiling. As Izuku said, okay, from outer space, got it, Izuku said. Uh, before Izuku could even finish that sentence, he was instantly punched in the face by one of Lala's guards. Sorry sir, but we won't let you hurt. Miss Lala, I let you fiend, he said. Okay, that hurt, Izuku said, trying to get back up onto his feet. Stay down or you die, the man said. As before he could even finish his sentence, Izuku disappeared from the man's rear view. What the hell? I thought humans were weak. What the fuck is this shit? The man said. But the man was hit with a 20% smash, moving up to a 30% kick, to a 40% haymaker, to the man's skull, breaking it and punching the man almost into outer space. Come on Lala, let's go, Izuku said, grabbing at her arm. But that's my god, she said, pointing over to his limp body, falling down into the atmosphere. As before, she could finish his sentence, Izuku said, uh, excuse me, he's your god, then why are you running from him? <laughs> he said. Well, my father arranged a arranged marriage for me to marry, a, well, an extended guardian, and he thinks it would be perfect for me to marry him for some weird reason. I don't want to marry, though that's the funny thing. I only want to marry someone I like. She said very nervously and innocent. As we cut to a couple of hours after Izuku hit him in the head, she, Lala actually managed to heal him up perfectly fine using one of her little gadgets she tinkers with daily. As the man explained to him what all their rules and everything is, but the moment the man brought up when you grab Miss Lala by the honkers, I would say, you have to marry her. Izuku's face went entirely red and just said, Oh shit, Izuku said, as Lala brought into the conversation. Yeah, he did, and I adore him for it, she said, hugging his left arm, as the guard would have just said, uh, My heart, I must obey the king, but I can't, he said, as the man who actually was Lala's guard would have actually gave in for the peer pressure of Lala as actually would have let the marriage go and would let Lala stay on earth. As we do a little time skip up till the next day, Izuku was in high school around this time in his second year. You all know this, just let you guys remember just in case you skip through that part. As Izuku arrived at school, as he went through all of his lessons like normal time or halfway through the day, Izuku. Izuku would be upstairs helping Aizawa take some little papers to the actual principal's office as Izuku dropped them off, Izuku was walking down the corridor, he has heard a commotion downstairs. As Izuku turned the corner and looked, Izuku saw Lala walking around 
in her spaceship uniform. As Izuku ran downstairs to her and told her what she was doing here, as she replied saying, I actually just want to know what school this type of school was like you were on about Izuku. As Izuku was just about to drag her away before I met her and Kamenari came through the corner. So Izuku, you had like to introduce you to us to your friend, he said. As Lala would have just said, yeah, I'm Mizuki's beautiful bride to be, she said, as most of the boys there was filled with a furious rage. Izuku, I know we shouldn't be mad at this, but Jesus Christ, you're looking like a punching bag right now. Izuku, you're looking like a nice punching bag right now, most of them were saying on repeat, until one of them said, get him. As Izuku picked up her bridal style, charged 5% and ran. As fast as he could. As Izuku ran past most of the teachers like Midnight and present Mike. As most of the students behind Izuku was chasing him. But they were wondering why they were. So Midnight captured one of the students in her whip. And asked one of the students why the hell is she chasing. They're chasing Izuku. As one of the students repeated saying. Let me at him for God's sake. Let, please let me at him. Miss Midnight. As Miss Midnight was confused at this and asked once more, as the guy would have replied, saying, Honestly, I don't really know why I'm mad. I just feel furious, that's all. As the man would have repeated. So it's one of like those anime trope type of things where the. Oh shit. Midnight would know about this as she would instantly start running. As she would actually try and get ahead of most of the students, but most of them were still being cut off ahead. As Izuku would have been trying to push through most of the crowd, getting ready to actually leap out the window last second. Ah, uh, screw this, Izuku said. As Izuku grabbed Lala by one more hand bridal style and used floats and one for all to get down safely to the ground without hurting her. As we do a couple of hour time skip but Izuku is in the park waiting for everything to blow over. As Izuku was waiting on the grounds of UA until Araka came up to him and said, Hey Izuku, can I talk with you a second? She said. As Izuku said, Yeah, what's up, Araka? I'm just wondering if you can go out. But before she could finish her sentence, she saw Lala right next to Izuku hugging his arm. Oh, I see, she said, running off crying. As uh, Izuku was really confused of why she was crying and running off. So Izuku just said, Yo, Lala, do you know why she's crying and running off? I don't know, she said. Uh, she just sat there with Izuku clinging to his arm until the end of the day. Every single bit of that would have gone like normal. Izuku would have ride back home to see his mother sat on the couch with the, one of the guards explaining to her why Izuku would be marrying and so on and so forth. Izinka would have gone to her son crying, I'm so glad you're getting married, I never thought you'd get married in your life, she said crying. Wait, what? Izuki said. As Izuku was really confused with what she just said, but still carried on with his speech. So, Mr. Izuku, you'll be getting married to Miss Lala at the end of the month. Today is the 10th, so you have 20 days to get yourself prepared. Wait, what? Izuku said, really confused. So, I'm basically getting married to Lala at the end of the month, on the 31st, right? Izuku said, yes, very much, and you'll be getting married to, and everything will be finished on 12 a.m., basically. We're trying to get everything precise here for the actual fireworks display, she said, as Izuku and Lala's relationship would have blossomed into a full one. As Izuku and Lala's relationship would have gone further and further and deeper and deeper into their conversations. As those days turned into weeks and those weeks turned into the last month of Izuku's freedom as a man. As Izuku was walking down the street picking up his tuxedo and his suit. As Izuku saw some of his classmates actually walking the same direction as Izuku. As he's, this classmate would have actually been notified that Izuku is actually getting married on the 31st. As they would have actually been generally invited by Inko. As same with most of UA. Same with All Might being there. 
quote unquote, and I mean quote unquote, father figure for Izuku, as it was 6 p.m. as Izuku was really nervous of getting married to a Lala, as Izuku heard a knock at the door. This being Lala herself. Hey, Izuku, do you want to get married? She said. Yes, I do, Lala. What's wrong? He said. Well, you just seem a little bit off-putting. Don't worry, it's just nerves. They'll just go away very shortly, Izuku said. Are you sure? Lala said. Yes, I'm sure, Lala. I promise you I love you, Lala, and I really want to get married to you, Izuku said. As Lala just hugged Izuku and gave him a kiss on the cheek. As Izuku just started to get back to what he was doing. As Lala was getting put into her dress for the final day of her also being single as well. As the day would have gone on until the day finally arrived. As Izuku was walking down the aisle until Lala opened the door. As a father who looked like a hulking behemoth helped walk Lala down the aisle. As her father started to have tears of joy and laughed from her for his daughter. As the moment he hopped Lala right there, he whispered to Izuku's ear, you make my daughter cry, and no one in the fucking universe will be able to stop me, he said. As a little shiver came down Izuku's spine when he said that, but it would be pretty normal, I would say. As the marriage would have gone on like normal, as they would say there were dues, as the flowers and everything like that, and the fireworks would have gone off. As Izuku and Lala was both walking down the actual stairs to actually get to their bedroom, you would like to say, as the moment Izuku sat down on the bed and took off his tie, Lala instantly jumped on him, snuggling into his chest. Hey Izuku, can we just lay here for a little bit please? She said, snuggling even more further in, to get him more relaxed. Sure, Lala, why not, Izuku said, as Izuku and Lala both stayed there in that same position, all the way until Izuku fell asleep on Lala. All Lala fell asleep on Izuku, you like to say. As the next day came like it was nothing, as Izuku woke up from his slumber to see Lala laid right next to him, snuggling into his chest. As Izuku shugged Lala, telling her to wake up, as Izuku looked at the time, seeing it was around 10 a.m., almost pushing half past. As Izuku got up, he got changed and washed, as Lala was a couple of minutes behind him, as she got changed as well. As they arrived downstairs to see the king waiting outside patiently. As the king actually would have gone to Izuku and told him, Young man, you'll be taking my mantle very soon. So, do you want to agree to disagree or do you want it? The man said. Let's just wait until I'm a little bit older for that mantle, sir. Izuku said, as the man would have just tapped Izuku on the head telling him, you have until 10 years to decide if you want to take my mantle or not. If you don't take it, the world's going to go into chaos, or the universe will, the man said. As Izuku would have agreed on that, saying, 10 years I will take your mantle, that old man. Izuku said, laughing maniacally a little bit. That cockiness will be the death of you, Izuku, if you're not careful. Son-in-law, <laughs> the old man said, as he got into his ship and flew off and wished his little darling daughter Lala a happy life with him as Izuku and Lala was both going into the reception where everyone was having their breakfast as most of class 1A as Izuku's mother started to walk up to him my little Izuku's married Inko said hugging her son as Izuku would said mom you're tricking me Izuku said trying to get his air back from his being choked from his mother Oops, sorry Izuku, she said, as she would have gone to Lala and hugged her instantly. Hello daughter-in-law, she said smiling, as Izuku and Lala both had a conversation for a good half an hour before Inko instantly took Lala away from Izuku. As Lala was saying, Izuku save me, she said for a comic relief character, as Inko would have just tugged her further and further into the corner. So, did you do the dirty? Inko said. 
as Lala had a blush on her face the size of the red mark of a tomato, as Izuku would have been going to chat with All Might for a good half an hour until everyone had to leave for their afternoon shit. As the day went on, as Izuku was going to his classes like normal, until one thing happened. Izuku was going down into the port course and saw Mei Hatsume with Lala. As Izuku would just said, Yo, Lala, what's up? Izuku said, Izuku, remember when I told you I was going to uh, apply for an actual course here? Yeah, what's up? That, yeah? I'm going to apply for the actual support course. I think I can get a little bit more knowledge on how this world technology works, Lala said. As Izuku and Lala both had a chat with Mei Hatsume for a while, until Lala pulled out a suitcase for Izuku. Here you go, babe, she said smiling, as Izuku had a big blush on his face from Lala calling him babe. B -b 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 babe, Izuku said. As Lala and Izuku both shared a kiss with each other, saying their thank yous, so you know what I mean, my guy? Haha, <laughs> funny. As Izuku would have tried on his hero costume for the next lesson that they were going to arrive at, as Izuku would have got changed into it, as Lala would have had a big blush on her face, noticing Izuku's muscle outline on the actual costume, as Mei would have got up to Izuku behind him and started to feel his hero costume. As Lala got really jealous of this, pushing Mei off of him and started to cuddle under Izuku's right arm, saying, Mei, I've told you, he's my husband, she said, putting her tongue out at her. As Mei would have got a little bit jealous of it, but she still would respect her boundaries. As the next lesson that Izuku was going to was the USJ, actually. So our big difference here would be Shigaraki is non-existent, so I'm going to have to fill a gap in here. As Izuku and everyone else were getting onto the bus, as Izuku just waved at Lala, with Lala waving out the window. So, you really like Izuku, don't you? May replied, saying, Well, of course I do with my husband. Well, of course I won't look. Of course I would love him, she said, really confused. Oh, sorry, I didn't think you meant it that way. Sorry, I meant it in the way that you really love him, that's all. Yeah, of course I do, she said, with a blush on her face. As Mei and Lala was both went back to work, as Izuku's point of view would arrive back, as Izuku would be talking to everyone in his class, until Mineta brought up. So, Midoriya, have you done the dirty with Lala yet? <laughs> oh god, Mineta said. Done the dirty? Izuku said, tilting his head to the side. You know what I mean. Sex, Mineta replied. Uh, 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 no? Why the hell? Mineta, Izuku said, as, Izuku, as Mineta got a slap in the face by Suyu's massive long tongue. Mineta, stop being pervy, Su said, as Aizara would have told all of his students to shut up once more and actually get off the bus right now, we're all here. As Aizara got every student off the bus and went into the USJ, as everything would have gone similar to canon, but... More or less, I would say the villains would probably attack again, but it'll be different people to the point and it's basically just a random bunch of lower villains that can easily be defeated. But the one person that would stand out the most would probably be this girl that walked through the little portal that with black mist falling off her body, as Izuku would have told everyone. That must be her who would be open in the portal. Wow, this kind of would be deja vu, Izuku said, Jesus Christ. As Izuku got into a fighting stance and told Ozawa he's going to be jumping in now, but Ozawa stopped him saying, Izuku, stop for a second. Remember, you have to watch what you're doing because if you die, the fucking king of the fucking Loki, or kind of her name, so don't judge me, the world will probably destroy this in a second, Ozawa said. I'm aware of that, why do you think I want to charge in? I want to save people, Izuku said. Ah, fine then. Go all out there, just make sure you don't get hit, Izawa said. As Izawa charged in full force, activating his Sharingan. Uh, out, I mean, activating his Eraser Quirk. 
You have to admit though, Eraser Head does give you vibes of the Sharing Gun half the time, as Izuku launched out from the actual staircase, piling in, twisting his body like a torpedo. St. Louis smash! Izuku shouted, hitting one of the villains straight in the chest, knocking him back, knocking most of the villains back from the actual wind pressure that was created from Izuku's mighty blow. Once Izuku was farther away from most of the villains, Izuku saw a little girl, at least it looked like it, in the middle of the USJ. As Izuku would have started to say, Why is there a little girl here? Izuku said. As Izuku would have just walked up to her and said, Excuse me girl, but why are you... And before Izuku could say anything, a little spear-like substance was thrown at him. As Izuku jumped back and activated Black Whip just to grab it in time. <laughs> what the hell? Izuku said. But before Izuku could finish that sentence, Izuku's body felt like it was being thrown back. As the moment he did so, Izuku's body flew. The moment Izuku was about to hit the wall, Izuku used float just in time, able to stop himself before he hit the wall. As Izuku pushed off of the wall using 50% right now, to actually able to launch himself. As the moment Izuku collided with her, she just stood there and took it. As Izuku backed up a little bit, saying, okay, she can handle 50. Well then, let's try this then as Izuku started to bounce and use Black Whip to actually hold on to the areas he was using. If you guys are familiar with the My Hero manga, you guys will all know what this is. If you guys don't, please just skip ahead because these are manga spoilers to the actual series. As Izuku charged up his quirk that he got from one of the users, as Izuku said, Fajin! SMASH! Izuku said using 50% with Fargin at its max, able to use all the way to Izuku's 50 times stronger than his 15% punch, equal to the amount of force Izuku put behind it as well. Izuku's managed to actually use a 120% smash in All Might's Prime, knocking her far and back, breaking the sound barrier around this time as well shattering most of the windows in the USJ as most of the glass was just about to fall on some students before Izuku activated Black Whip and actually flinged most of the glass away using the flinging motion with also the air pressure along with it. Izuku managed to actually go check if the person he just hit right now with 120% is literally dead so Izuku checked over at her paws but before Izuku could grab her, she grabbed him by the neck and started to absorb something. Izuku didn't give her time, however, as Izuku used a little amount of percentages of one for all he could muster and poked her far into the eye, making her skull cave in on the side. Damn it, you bastard! She said. Finally, you said something, Izuku said, as Izuku pulled out her eye. Also, a little fraction bit of her brain as well. As Izuku managed to actually hop onto the floor. A little gasping for air, but doesn't stop our little Izuku. As Izuku popped up his body from the bottom of the wall. As Izuku pulled up himself. Managed to actually gain a little bit of strength back we would have lost. Alright, time for my final blow, Izuku said. Ah, Izuku said, screaming on top of his lungs as Izuku activated Float, Black Whip, and 100% one for all. As Izuku wrapped his arm up in Black Whip. Detroit Smash! Izuku said, using 150%. As Izuku smashed into her, creating massive amounts of shockwaves in the USJ, this time breaking the floor underneath him managed to go under two miles underneath Izuku, sending her out much flying in the world, literally sending her into outer space as she flew straight out of the atmosphere and going straight further and further into outer space. I know it makes no sense, but it worked nonetheless for this story part. As Izuku's point of view would be going back to, as Izuku looked at his right arm, 
looking a little bit broken and bruised, but not enough as what it would be in canon with it being fully busted. As Izuku would have just gone to his knees onto the floor, gasping for air. As Izuku would have actually had a couple of heroes come to him the moment they came down the door. Oh, for God's sake, not again at the USJ, for fuck's sake, one of the heroes said. As a bunch of the heroes came and saw Izuku the mostly injured out of everyone. As they came and helped Izuku up and take him to the nearby hospital. But thanks to Lala's influence in the actual Earth now, because, uh, <coughs> international king, or going to be, Izuku had more treatment than what he should have, and they went overkill on the healing meds. Let's just say he's beyond fucking healed. <laughs> As Izuku would have actually woke up and saw Lala right night next to him. As Izuku was waking up as he felt basically no pain at all now. Izuku felt like he could take on the world, Izuku thought. But when the moment he woke up, however, Lala noticed him and instantly tackled him into a hug. Izuku, you big mean I thought you were gonna die, she said. As she just hugged Izuku. Moving a single inch. I'm not moving until you promise me you won't be hurt, she said, pouting. As Izuku's heart just melted, knowing that Lala's cuteness can overload his systems. As Izuku just sat there and just sat there and just actually let pet Lala on the head. As Izuku and Lala both stood there until Izawa came into the classroom. Uh, Miss Lala, what are you doing here? Aizawa said grudgingly. Well, I'm here with my husband. Is there something wrong with that? She said, staring daggers at him. No, there isn't. Aizawa said, shaking. Mr. Aizawa, why are you scared? One of the students would have retorted. Uh, nothing, he said, just rockedly smiling. He never smiled. Something's wrong. Aizawa, what's wrong? Ida said, standing up and shaking Aizawa very angrily. Nothing's wrong, Aizawa said. As Aizawa told Ida to go sit down or get sent to the principal's office, which Ida complied. Just sat down at his desk and just wait until the actual lesson was over. As a couple of hours went by until the actual lesson finished. As the final lesson began. As Izuku and Lala was both sitting in the actual dinner halls, waiting for the next lesson to arrive, until one of the teachers came up to Izuku and asked him a question. Young Midoriya, can I borrow you a second? This teacher would have asked Izuku with a question face. Yeah, what is it? Uh, okay, how do I say this? Are you going to be a hero, or are you going to just go straight into the outer space? Because most of us are betting on it. Why would you bet on something like that? Izuku wondered. Very questionable. Well, you see, you'll be because you're the king and everything. Uh, All Might has thought about giving your quirk to Mirio. Like, he's f asked his students around. You know what I mean, right? Izuku was really confused at that saying. Why would All Might want his qu my quirk, Izuku said. Well, you're going into outer space, right? So it's better off it being up staying on Earth with one for all than it is anywhere else, he said. Okay, let's do a little flashback here to when Izuku came back from the actual killing all for one in Shigaraki. Izuku arrived back in UA after the actual fight would happen. As Izuku came back with broken bones, arm, leg, everything almost broken entirely. If it wasn't for Float, Izuku would probably be on the floor collapsed and probably bleeding out profusely. As Izuku arrived at the UA campus building, as Izuku just collapsed from the overusage of Float. As Izuku would have been instantly saw by other students and teacher and faculty like that. As Izuku has been rushed into Recovery Girl's office and been healed to the best they could. A couple of hours later, Izuku would have awoke to a weird sound of muttering and shouting. Uh, Izuku's groaning in pain as Izuku moved his left arm to try and reach it up, but Izuku couldn't move it. He was paralyzed, Izuku said. Hey, Midori is awake. Midori is awake, Shikikurashima said. 
as most of the students came over to Izuku's side, seeing him fully awake and alright, as Izuku would have just said, uh, as Izuku couldn't get a single word out of him, so he got Kirishima to give him the little keyboard type of thing, as Izuku started to tap the screen of what numbers he wanted and what he wanted to say, as Kirishima put it on the speaker, why am I here? I meant to not be here, Izuku said. Well, Izuku, you just collapsed outside of the front gates. Do you know why you were there? Izuku said. I mean, Kirishima said. As Kirishima would have just typed give Izuku back the tablet, as Izuku just wrote even more onto the tablet. I think I might have accidentally come here, but I have to go, Izuku said. I put you in. Th uh danger, Izuku said, as Kirishima would have just said, and everyone else in unison, you're not going anywhere, Izuku, you're more or less paralyzed at the very moment, if you go anywhere, you'll probably bleed out and die, you can't defend for yourself right now, Izuku, as all the students of class 1A and some teachers hold Izuku, tried to hold Izuku down from moving, as a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds later, Inko came pushing down the door, my baby Zuku has been found. No! She said, as she instantly charged at Izuku, but before she could jump on him and hook him like a mother should, Inko was stopped by Kurishima and Bakugo holding her back. Auntie Inko, you can't jump on Izuku. His body's in a frail state. You can't move it. Bakugo said, "I don't care. Give me my Izuku." She said, but. Inko slipped through Bakugo's grist, but still with Kirishima holding her. As we skip a couple of hours later, once Izuku was fully healed, as Izuku had Eri heal him almost halfway, but still ran out of juice halfway through healing him. So Izuku's wounds are going to be like before the war arc begins. As Izuku's wounds were fully healed, Izuku actually was able to move around perfectly fine, but still had trouble moving his left arm around thanks to it being broken loads of times during that time frame. As we skip back to the actual Bruce perspective in the future of Izuku Midoriya sat in the principal's office with Lala. So Mr. Midoriya, what are you planning to do after when you leave high school? Well, I was actually planning on uh, becoming a hero, Izuku said. Oh, okay. So what are you gonna do about leading the patrol troops with Lala? Oh, I'm gonna do that in 10 years after when I leave high school, of course. Wait, why aren't you doing it straight away once you leave? Because I want to become a hero for 10 years. Why won't I be? Izuku said, laughing nervously. Alright, young Midoriya. As Izuku turned around to see All Might's face. Young Midoriya, please give me your quirk, All Might said. As Izuku was questioning why. Well, you see, since you're going in 10 years to be the actual new king of a new planet or empire, well... There's no point in you even keeping one for all here, or out there. One for all needs to stay here, All Might said, as Izuku would retorted, saying, Actually, one for all can be in any places at once. I've had a chat with the users, and uh, they don't seem to really like you as much, Toshinori, anymore. As Izuku was questioning, well, as All Might was questioning why. Well, you see, you know since, uh, the Shigaraki incident with Tomura, Nana is really, really pissed at you, All Might. And I don't think she would really like that if you took the crook away from me. That wouldn't be very nice, would it? Izuku said that with All Might's face being very questionable, see if this was true or not. As Izuku would have said, prove it then. Let me hop into the Vestige world and actually prove that the Vestige said that. Alright then, as Izuku grabbed All Might's hand, pulling him into the vestige world, as Nana Shimura would have just stared daggers at All Might, as she would have just walked up to him and kicked him straight in the balls. You fucking asshole, Nana Shimura said, kicking All Might even more in the groin, as Izuku would have pulled All Might straight out of the vestige world. You see, they don't really like you All Might, Izuku said. Well then, let's let the Dita Grist agree. Izuku Midoriya, hand over my quirk, All Might said. 
Excuse me, but oh my, I don't think that would be possible. Why? I have to be willing you to give it back, Izuki said. Then be willing to. Actually, I'm not that willing to, Izuki said, giving all my a deaf glare. Why don't you give it me back, all my said, starting to raise his voice. As Izuki started to feel a lot more weaker in knees. All Might, why are you shouting at me? Izuki said. Because you won't fucking listen, Midoriya. As All Might instantly covered his mouth. I'm sorry, young Midoriya, I lost my cool. Would you please uh, hand over one for all? No, Izuki said. As Izuki just grabbed Lala by her arms and legs and Lon put her on his back and Izuki just jumped straight out of the principal's office's window, shattering the glass. See you later all might, Izuki said, as Izuki jumped straight out the window, landing on the ground, just barely using float just in time, as Izuku had little bits of strain still left from his body since the fight with Shigaraki. Izuku just tried to ignore it the best he can while he was on pain medication. As Izuku was walking down the little corner area ready back to go back to the dorms. As Izuku met her with Mei Hatsume again. Oh hi Midoriya, she said with her goggles on. Hey, hi Mei, what are you doing? Nothing much, what about you? She said going far up to him. So what do you think of the upgrades then, young Midori? Yeah, da 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 she said, looking back at Lala. Ooh, looks like you two are on a date, aren't you? She said, as Izuku just blushed, with Lala just saying, Of course we're not, but we can be very soon. She said, hugging Izuku's arm tighter and tighter. As Mei would have got a little bit jealous of that, knowing she actually liked Izuku a tiny bit, but not a lot for him to actually be in a full relationship. As Mei would have just walked off with her defeat. As a couple of months turned into weeks, almost turned into days, went by. As in total, 5 months and 22 days went by. As Izuku would be in his third year of high school. As Lala and Izuku would have gone too close for comfort half the time. With Izuku and Lala both having their little cycles, with Lala being in heat half the time. As Izuku tried his best to avoid those days, knowing that how Lala kinky she actually was when she was in heat. So Izuku tried his best to avoid those types of situations with Lala until they graduated. As Izuku managed to actually slip out of Lala's grasp the moment he got out of her grasp, of course. As Izuku went back to class that day, as Aizawa told them all they'll be doing internships for their final year. As everyone would have said, Cool, but we're going to miss you, Aizawa. They said, Well, you've got five months left until you graduate, so I would say you'll miss me, Aizawa said. Just remember, after these internships are over, you'll come back here, write down what you've done and learn, and you'll be done for the entire year. So how long would the internships be, Bakugo said, being calmer than usual. As we do a little time skip of Bakugo's point of view. Since Bakugo actually has been less of an asshole recently throughout the years, thanks to Midori and the actual bunch of friends he made in UA, Bakugo seeked therapy and actual mental dampeners for his rage. So Bakugo is a lot calmer than what he should be, unlike Canon. As Bakugo started to just talk normally, which is surprising people still on how calm he finally is. As Izuku and everyone else would have picked their agencies and would have gone to them. As for Izuku's agency, you guys would know. It's a uh, drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. Miriko, also known as Ryu Tamiyama. As Izuku would have just selected this person's name on the actual board and would have delivered it straight to reception as they would have gone eye contact with Miriko. Miriko know that Izuku Midoriya will be coming, class 1A's number one student and the most strongest. As Miriko would have notified this and actually had a big toothy grin on her face. Her just seeing this would have said, finally a strong opponent, she said. After her injuries, she hasn't been able to do much hero work as she wanted to, but thanks to Lala's technology that would have leaked into the society. 
she would be able to do more and more hero work. So this would actually be the perfect time for her to thank Lala or Izuku's wife. As the day came as Izuku arrived at Miriko's agency. As Miriko and Izuku would have had a long chat of what they were going to do for the day as their training began. Izuku would have struggled with it at first, but Izuku would actually get used to it and his body would adjust to how powerful Miriko's kicks have become over the weeks and years. As Izuku would have adjusted to it, increasing 100%, decreasing it to I mean, from 100% to defense, to 50%, to 20%, and only being able to use 5% just to actually take Miriko out thanks to his insane speed boost and strength boost thank you to the actual quirks of one for all i don't know what the last quirk is of one for all until the next chapters come out of it so you have to quote me on this as izuku's quirks would have evolved a little tiny bit to lot but not a lot throughout the years so izuku would be able to destroy an entire block with black whip if he charged up 20 percent and went full out with black whip as for float he's able to actually fly now with it by actually lifting himself and kicking in the air creating mini wind pressures to actually help him fly. As with Fa Jin, it's basically just a stockpile quirk, but you can release it in one below. You just need more kinetic energy to actually do it. So that's basically what I know of at this moment. As smoke and everything wouldn't have changed, it's just the max capacity you can actually bring it out. So that's just basically one of them. As Izuku's life would have gone after that, Izuku came back with one scar leaving from his chest all the way to his stomach on the side as lala came back and would have noticed this izu what did you do to yourself she said holding his side as she peeked his stomach and twitched it a tiny bit ow me lala that hurt izuku said well you deserve that you big meanie she said walking at him thank you all for enjoying this 15 minute video and if you guys would actually like more of this series I'm not doing any more until the next chapter of My Hero comes out, so thank you all for watching. Make sure to join the Discord server and hit the subscribe button down below. We're getting so close to 1.4 and that'd be highly appreciated if you time to get the coin. In a bit, peace.